I would like to welcome you to Creating Sacred Space in Our Lives. I am Tripp Martin, pastor of Auburn First Baptist Church at the corner of Clinton and College in Auburn, Alabama. As we are thinking about those stories from the Gospels where Jesus gathers to have a meal with others, we might notice that sometimes the table manners of Jesus look a little different. That for most of our dinner tables, we just need to remember that the fork goes on the left. But at other dinner tables, it can get far more complicated. That there is more than one fork and you have to use the right one for the right dish. But in order from left to right, there's the salad fork, the fish fork, the dinner fork, the dessert fork, the oyster fork, or the cocktail fork. Of course, it seems like the dessert fork should be the last one on that list because it's the last part of the meal. But that cocktail fork is rather tricky. It seems like Jesus was not interested in table manners, or at least some of them. He did not always wash his hands. He sat in unconventional places. And his invitation list was sometimes unexpected. But perhaps he based his table manners on something other than Emily Post. There's that story from Luke chapter 7 where Jesus goes to Simon the Pharisee's house. But usually we think of the Pharisees as antagonists in Scripture. But here, Jesus accepts the invitation to gather at his house and to have a meal. And while Jesus was there, a woman, only known in the story as a sinner, comes and pours an alabaster jar of ointment on his feet. And she is weeping and crying. And the others who were there started to criticize her and to criticize Jesus because they referred to her as a sinner. Then Jesus tells the parable about two debtors, one who owed 500 denarii and the other one who owed just 50. Well, in the parable, both debts are forgiven. And he asks, who was more grateful? And of course, everyone said, the one with the bigger debt. When Jesus entered the Pharisee's house, Simon did not give Jesus water for his feet, but she bathed his feet with her tears. She dried them with her hair. So Jesus says to her, You are forgiven. That Jesus based table manners on the love of God. It changed who was invited and where they sat and how they were treated and hopefully how they felt when they left. There's that other story in Luke chapter 11 where Jesus takes his place at the table, but before he sits down, he doesn't wash his hands before dinner. But Jesus notices how the others washed even the outside of their dishes. But as he says, inside, they were greedy. That they tithed mint, but neglected justice. They practiced faith without concern for others. They loved the seats of honor, but they did not draw close to the least of these. That Jesus criticized their manners because he based table manners 
on relationships with others. Sarah Miles tells the story of her first communion. She was walking by the church and wandered in off the street. Simply a interested visitor. She says she had not been a church person. But this day changed everything. It was the mysterious grace of God because the congregation welcomed her. She felt a hunger she had not felt before. And she questioned all of her preconceived notions of the church. Because on the communion table, it said, Jesus welcomes sinners and eats with them. And this church not only fed people at the communion table, but also had an active food pantry for the same reason. Because everyone is welcome at the table. But how can a meal change our lives or change our table manners or change how we relate to others that it is the way of communion? Communion with God and community with others. In fact, it's one of the first things the early church did to distinguish itself. That it gathered on Sunday, the day of resurrection. That it gathered to have a meal together. That Jesus made decisions based on these kinds of relationships, communion with God and community with others. And wherever the correct fork got in the way, it did not keep him from investing himself in relationships with others. Samuel Wells says, I believe with is the most important word in the Christian faith. And he might be right. That in Jesus, God came to be with us. And love has a tenacious solidarity of being with others. And we need people to walk with us because none of us is meant to do this life alone. In fact, every practice of faith, even the ones that we practice alone, eventually lead us to be with God and to be with others. Whether it's the practice of silence or prayer, study or writing, solitude or reflection, that after we pull away, we begin to feel the nudge to move towards others, to widen the circle of our lives, that that is the nature of love. That Jesus gathers at the table to teach us how to be with others. That he did not think a person had to get everything right for us to gather with each other at the table of grace. Perhaps the most familiar table in our lives is the family table, the one where we gather with the people who know us the best. And maybe... That is where we learned table manners. Practicing keeping our elbows off the table or our napkin in our lap or using the correct fork. But it's also the place where we might have learned the most important manners. The practice of hospitality and openness, of humility and kindness, of respect and dignity. It's the place where we learn how to welcome others, even those who were different from us. That it is a helpful practice 
of gathering around the table, not only with those familiar to us, but also those who are different from us. That we learn to make room for others. Perhaps it's the international students who are without family during the holidays. And it's too far for them to travel home, so we invite them to gather with us around our table. Or perhaps it's military personnel whose responsibilities keep them away from family. So we invite them to gather around our tables. Perhaps it's those kinds of specific circumstances or it might be any circumstance where we meet someone and we open our lives to them by inviting them to join us around our tables, widening the circle of our lives. That the table manners of Jesus sometimes means using a different fork of doing things differently than we've done them before because it reminds us of the importance of being with others in the same way that Jesus pulled up a chair with all of those around him in order to sit at the table together. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful for all the ways in which Jesus pulls up a chair and sits down with us. May we take the grace that we have received and widen our tables to sit down with others, to build community with them to share the joy of life with one another, to offer support and to learn from them, to celebrate the gift of hospitality. May you continue to be with us as we learn to be with others. Amen. If you would like more information about Auburn First Baptist Church, that can be found at auburnfbc.org.